The Three Gorges Dam is the world's biggest dam. Everything about it is huge, and that includes the controversies. It has changed China forever. In this video, I want to talk briefly about this massive titanic piece of infrastructure and look at it from multiple angles. The Three Gorges Dam remains the world's biggest dam. It sits at the Three Gorges area within the Chongqing directly controlled municipality. The Three Gorges have been visited and admired by Chinese tourists and poets for millennia. It's a concrete gravity dam with a maximum height of 185 meters, the size of a 45 story building. It is designed for a normal pool height of 175 meters. The dam itself is made out of three parts. At the center is a 23 section spillway dam that is 483 meters long, nearly half a kilometer. On both sides of the spillway are 26 powerhouse dam sections. Together, they add another 1.2 kilometers. The dam is only one of three parts of what is called the Three Gorges Project. The other two parts include the powerhouses at the foot of the dam and the navigation facilities that allow ships to cross the dam. Those are pretty impressive in their own right. The dam holds back a titanic reservoir. It extends nearly 600 kilometers upstream, about the distance between San Francisco and Los Angeles. It stores a total capacity of some 40 cubic kilometers of water, which is seven times bigger than California's biggest reservoir, Shasta Lake. The Yangtze River is one of China's two great rivers and is the longest in Asia. It's been a cradle of Chinese civilization for millennia. It has brought prosperity and tears to the Chinese people. Hundreds of millions of people live on a strange basin. Chinese people have been damming the Yangtze for centuries. The Dujing Dam in the Chengdu area is over 2,200 years old and remains in operation. It dams the upper part of the Yangtze River in the Sichuan province. The idea of damming the Yangtze at the Three Gorges area has been kicking around since the days of Sun Yat-sen. In 1919, he published an article called A Plan to Develop Industry. He mentioned the possibility of building a series of large dams along the Yangtze. And Mao always had a strong personal interest in seeing a big dam on the Yangtze. After swimming across the Yangtze River in Wuhan in 1956, he wrote a poem that would indicate his belief that man would stand triumphant over wild nature. But in the 1960s, the Big Three Gorges Yangtze Dam was technically not feasible, and in the 70s, it was too expensive. FYI, him swimming the Yangtze was really super impressive. The river waters then were already very dirty, and many of the other people swimming alongside him got sick. In 1982, the Chinese government began investigating the idea of building a mega dam in the Three Gorges area, as Mao always dreamed. It progressed along for a few years, at first with the support and funding of major international agencies. However, strong environmentalist resistance to the project caused delays. Feasibility studies were lukewarm on the whole idea. There were multiple problems with sediment and the resettling of people, and then the Tiananmen incident in 1989 ended virtually all remaining international involvement. In 1992, Premier Li Peng revived the dam and the project passed with a two-thirds vote, a really close vote by Chinese standards. Jailing a number of Three Gorges activists and squashing public debate may have contributed to the project moving forward. Now I want to spend some time here briefly discussing some, but not all of the reasons why to go and not to go forward with a dam project. Why? The first and most important reason is flood control. The Yangtze is one of China's two major rivers, it is the world's third longest river. It is the cause of many of China's successes and tragedies. The Yangtze is very prone to flooding. Chinese records show some 200 plus floods that have occurred between 185 BC and 1911, so roughly one every 10 years. The Yangtze Basin is particularly susceptible to floods because the water level is just barely higher than the plain itself. This is due to the fact that the Yangtze's waters is high in silt. Silt deposits raise the river's levels, making it prone to spilling over its banks. These floods have massive human and financial costs. Three disastrous floods which happened in 1931, 1935, and 1954 killed some 300,000 people combined. An 1870 flood killed a rumored 240,000 all by itself. Even relatively recently, a 1998 flood killed 3,000 people, disrupted the lives of some 300 million 
and inflicted $50 billion of damages. A system of levees were built to help control the Yangtze, and for the most part, it has worked. But those flood control measures have had their own consequences too. For example, the reinforcement of the Jingjiang levee since the 1950s meant that river silt was taken out of the Yangtze and dumped into the nearby Dongting Lake. The Dongting Lake is a runoff lake that had previously absorbed flood water from the Yangtze. Dumping that silt into the lake over the years reduced its capacity to absorb flood runoff capacity by nearly 50%. Thus, the Chinese government sees the Three Gorges Dam as the most definitive and final solution to the Yangtze flooding issue. The dam will be able to store, control, and mediate the Yangtze's floods. Before each flood season, the dam would release its reservoir and open up nearly 22 billion cubic meters of flood control capacity. A disastrous once a decade flood can be reduced to happening only once every 100 years, climate change notwithstanding. This benefit alone would save the country from hundreds of millions of dollars of economic damage and is hard to argue against. The second big reason is electricity. China is growing fast and that growth needs electricity. The country has been a voracious consumer of petroleum fuels. The Three Gorges Dam would provide a self-sustaining renewable energy source that is clean and carbon friendly. The dam's 34 generators create 20 times more electricity annually than the Hoover Dam in Arizona and generate some 92 terawatts an hour of electricity per year. This power is consumed by nine provinces and two major cities, including the 24 million people of Shanghai. There are a few other reasons. It would make the Three Gorges area easier for boats to navigate. It would help store fresh water to help alleviate potential drought, and it provides water for agricultural benefit. Now here's the downfall. Big dams are immensely disruptive to the environment, and the Three Gorges Dam was immensely controversial even as it was being planned and built. The World Bank and other international agencies have been in recent years discouraging the funding and construction of major dams. This is due to the high environmental and social costs they create. I'm not going to be able to hit all of the issues relating to the Three Gorges Dam. It would fill a whole book, but here are a few summarized points. First, let's hit this one. People might argue that human lives are number one, build the dam, stop the floods, people over Chinese river dolphins, end of story. But the science is a bit more nuanced. First, the Three Gorges Dam is not ideally placed to prevent a majority of the Yangtze's floods. The floods in 1954 and 1998 were caused by major storms downstream from the Three Gorges in the Yangtze Middle Reaches. It is very arguable that the Three Gorges Dam could not have helped to prevent those floods. In contrast, the San Menxia Dam built 1960, though with frequent renovations on the Yellow River, is placed such that it can control over 92% of the river's watershed. And that's a good dam. Well, except for one thing, silt. And that's the second problem. Two years after the San Menxia Dam was complete, it had to be substantially renovated due to the Yellow River's immense silt deposits, which had reduced the reservoir's capacity by a significant amount. It threatened another spillover. The Yangtze is not as silty as the Yellow River. The Yellow River is the world's most silt-heavy river, after all. But the Yangtze happens to be fourth, and the amount of silt in its waters is only going to go up. The dam's power generation effects, by the way, are also dampened by the silt deposits. The more silt buildup, the less energy generated. So every time they close the gates during flood season, a huge amount of silt gets deposited at the bottom of the reservoir. So eventually you will have a dam that could potentially spill over or even collapse without constant, careful maintenance and management. Second, the dam will flood a huge area behind it with water. Some 600 square kilometers of land will be lost. Some people need to be cleared from those areas. Many animals will lose their homes on both sides of the dam. The Three Gorges Dam's reservoir will inundate 4,000 villages, 140 towns, 13 cities, and 100,000 acres of farmland. Some 1.3 to 1.6 million people would need to be relocated. And just because the people are gone from the cities being flooded doesn't mean the danger is either. Inundating those cities would contaminate the river water and turn it toxic. And the Yangtze River's water was not all that clean to begin with. 
Remember what I said about Mao's bodyguards getting sick when they swam with him. It's one of the most polluted rivers in the world. Now imagine all that water hitting and absorbing the toxic substances from 1,300 factories and mines, 40,000 graveyards, and 200 garbage dumps. Yuck. The government pledged to build many voice water plants to treat this, but many of those came 10 years after the dam was built. Too late for many animals and plants and people living there. In addition, there are greenhouse effects to consider as well. Submerged vegetation starts to decay and generate carbon dioxide, creating local climate change effects, which counterbalance the green effects of having a nearby source of renewable energy. And I'm not even talking about some of the concerns, like those of the people being relocated out of their ancestral homes or the cultural heritage sites drowned underwater. I'll touch briefly on those, as these stories have gotten a lot of press. Substantial effort was indeed taken by the Chinese government to move people in a safe and responsible manner, but of course such efforts were controversially insufficient. Worse yet, the farmland being inundated by the reservoir could not be easily replaced. Many lost not just their homes, but also their only source of income. 1,282 cultural heritage sites would be plunged under deep water. Many of them only were recently discovered and documented before the waters rose. The Chinese government was only able to address 453 of them. Some were relocated. The Dangfei Temple was moved 32 kilometers at the cost of $6 million. Some were protected. The 1,200-year-old Baihe Lang Stone, for example. This 1.6-kilometer long stone was carved with 30 Chinese poems and was used for navigating the Yangtze's waters. This UNESCO site was preserved in an amazing underwater museum. But the fact is, most sites were simply photographed before the waters came. But regardless, the dam was built in the end. The party wanted it, it got what it wanted. So let us talk briefly on the actual construction, which went relatively smoothly, of this technical marvel. The Three Gorges Dam was built in three stages over roughly a decade. The work was supervised in entirety by a single supreme body, the Three Gorges Project Construction Committee. This committee is headed by the State Council Premier and features the heads of the relevant ministries in addition to the provincial governors of Hebei, Sichuan, and Chongqing. To manage and own the dam, the State Council founded a corporation and endowed it with $670 million of assets, the wordy China Yangtze River Three Gorges Project Development Corporation. It continues to own the dam today. The Anglo-French group GEC Alstom and Switzerland's ABB won the tender for providing the first seven generators for the Three Gorges project. They were required to share their technology with state-owned Harbin Power Equipment Company. Harbin Power would build the eighth generator based on their learnings. This is an instance of foreign technology transfer. The rest of the turbines were built by a German-Canadian consortium working with the state-owned Dongfan Machinery and Electronics Corp. This is also another instance of foreign technology transfer. The cement for the dam would come from the Hebei Huaxin Cement Company and the Sichuan Jinding Corporation. No foreign companies were invited to provide this. In total, the dam would use nearly 463,000 tons of steel, enough to build 63 Eiffel Towers and 27 million cubic meters of concrete. The dam sits on a foundation of high-strength homogeneous granite that is mostly intact. 886 faults were identified at the dam site. Most of them were small and of low risk. Phase 1 officially started in December 14, 1994, with an opening ceremony attended by Li Peng. Phase 1 would see the building of support structures and closing off the Yangtze River's main channel for diversionary purposes. Phase 2 would last from 1998 to 2003, it saw the building of the 1.7-kilometer-long, 185-meter-high section of the dam on its left bank. This includes the first powerhouses and turbine generators. Phase 2 would see the building of the ship lock. They also began filling the reservoir behind the dam for the first time, topping off at the 135-meter mark. By now, people have already been started relocated. In Phase 2, the final resettlement of people would be completed with 1.2 million people, some, moved. With everyone steadily resettled out of the way, it allowed the water level to be raised further to the final 175 meters. The Three Gorges Dam is a divisive thing. When you bring it up to people, they either treat it with awe or disgust. 
Large dams have been important in human development for thousands of years, but some 45,000 large dams have been built in the past 100 years alone. China is the biggest dam building country in the world. They had 22 big dams, meaning over 15 meters tall, in 1949. Today they have over 22,000. The United States, a country just as big as China, has 6,390 dams. Dams are controversial for a reason. Their long-term environmental and economic effects remain uncertain. There are definitely a lot of good things with big dams, but you can always have too much of a good thing. All right, everyone. Have a good one.